Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lynette and the Tourism Channel where we talk about tourism, travel, all those amazing things. So here we are at Seziwa Falls and it's a very beautiful place. It has a big bamboo forest and I've never been this side of the falls and it's such a beautiful area to have nature walks, to have picnics. I'm going to take you all around. We're going to have a guided tour of the Seziwa Falls. They have a very strong cultural attachment to them. So you shall be given a tour, taken around the different culture shrines because there are several. Because this facility is actually under Buganda Kingdom, it's one of the culture sites of Buganda, and it's also an a nature site because we have the waterfall and then we have a lot of green around. We have a lot of forest. So I was joined in by the marketing manager of Buganda Heritage and Tourism Board, Joseph Kauma, and he's going to give us a detailed description an explanation about Seziwa Falls, the history, how it came about, the different things you should look out for, how close it is from Kampala. Oh, but something he he did not mention are the prices. So to go to Seziwa Falls for a Ugandan is only 5,000 shillings. For a foreigner, it's 20,000. Camping at Seziwa is 10,000 per person without a tent. So you carry your own tent and they give you the camping facility. There are washrooms which are being modified. So there is something good, but they're working on getting better and better structures. You know, they're working on a restaurant. Currently, they don't have one. So they encourage you to come with your own outside catering services, your own packed food. It's all allowed currently. They have a mini bar, but they also encourage you to come with your own drinks at the moment. But in future, they plan to have a fully stocked reception. So that's us getting in. It was a beautiful experience. Like I said, Sezawa Falls has a lot of tourism structure. It has a lot of tourism history, both cultural history, archaeological history, you know, uh, political history because of the kings who have been there, the places of worship. So it was a very beautiful experience. I went to the different YouTubers who are into travel. You're going to see them as the videos go on. Some of them, you saw them already. So it was a, a YouTuber's boot camp, beautiful experience. But if it's your first time on my channel and you haven't subscribed before we go into this detailed story, subscribe if you like this content. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this content. Otherwise, I'll keep sharing my travel experiences with you guys. Let me know which places you want me to visit next so I can give out content that you really love. I know you love culture. So I have a YouTube video. I have a video coming up for culture. Stay tuned and don't miss that. Until next time, bye-bye. Sezibo Falls um, is a great culturally significant site to the kingdom of Buganda. This site is located um, 30 to 5, 35 kilometers from Kampala Long Ginger Road in Jeru Sub County, Mkono District, or Chagwe County. The history behind um, Sezibo Falls is that legend has it that on one fateful day, a lady called um, Nakangu Tebatusa, and she's a wife to Suga Sebuato. On one day, they, they, you know, they got misunderstandings or marital issues, just like any family. And, you know, Nakangu chose to go back, you know, to leave her marital home and go back to her parents' home, maybe for the situation to kind of calm, calm down. But then her dad told her to go back, you know, to her husband and sort out the marital issues. So now as she was going back, she was escorted by her mother who left her close to her home. Now, as she approached the home, hmm, her marital home, she kind of got tired and, you know, she rested. Now, on resting on the ground, she gave birth to twins. Now, these were unlike normal babies. These were in form of, you know, rivers. One came to be called Seziwa and the other, Buanda. Um, of the two rivers, Seziwa was most phenomenal, you know, for its might and unrelenting flow, uh, breaking through swampy and rocky obstacles, you know, trying to find its way. Now, because of this 
uh, you know, because of this um, strength and that being phenomenal, you know, he was given a name quite ideal for a river synonymous with the Luganda phrase, Sizibu Waku. Now this one loses the translates in English, you know, to mean my path can never be blocked. Now at birth, Wanda flowed towards the east, to Nyenga and Seziba flowed towards the west, meeting many obstacles. But this unrelenting flow was supported by a spirit called uh, Nalongo Kubo you know, through these obstacles, because it was not very normal. Now, these spirits are settled in the area around the falls, and on the site, shrines were built to worship them. Now, apart from Nalongo Kubo, there are other gods at the site, like Walumbe, who is god of the death and, and life, Musoke, you know, god of the rains, Dungu, god for hunting, Chibuka for war, uh, there is Mosisi for earthquakes, Mukasa for fertility, wealth, and good health. But because of this legend, and actually it's because of this legend that twins in Buganda are highly valued. Their, their birth is looked upon as a special blessing and rituals were performed to appease these gods. Now the parents are given special names like Salongo for the father and Nalongo for the mother. And it was tradition in Buganda for everyone passing close to these waterfalls to throw stones into the waters for blessings, you can imagine. But because the entire river squeezes now, this is the formation of the falls. Because the entire river squeezes through a narrow opening of rocks, you know, flowing about 14 meters deep into a large pool, it forms a river fall. Just like you see Matson Falls, that the entire narrow river flows into a very, very narrow gorge, you know, so that force through that narrow gorge and flowing, you know, mid, uh, uh, meters deep, several meters deep, it formed Maxion Falls. So same applies to Seziba Falls. So now, in Buganda, like we said that this site is culture significant. Apart from the history around it, the previous kings of Buganda have visited this site to acknowledge, you know, the relevance of this site to the kingdom. Now, it said that in 1888, that is history notes that, 1888, Kabaka Mwanga II planted a wild olive tree at the site. Actually, it's called Mwanga Tree, and it's 100 years now, plus old. Kabaka Mutesa also planted a tree in respect to the cultural significance of the site. And also, uh, the current Kabaka, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II, visited the same site in 2002 and planted a tree and also commissioned it as one of Buganda's great culture sites. Now, the cultural relevance and significance of this site, not only to the kingdom but even to the people out there, it has made people, you know, flock the place from world over. They come to this site seeking blessings for their health, uh, the children, you know, families, businesses, jobs, mention it. They come at this site and indeed they get the blessings. In fact, they come back to testify and thank the gods for what they've done for them. Now, uh, other than that, the site offers a perfect spot for nature lovers. Holiday makers, honeymooners, you know, it's fever, it's uh, the site is prominent for bird watching because there are a couple of several bird species on the site because of the several, you know, uh, tree species still at the site. Uh, so people, you know, uh, come to the site for bird watching, nature and primate walks, community walks because there's a community neighboring the falls. You know, biking is fantastic, rock climbing. There are several, several rock rocks at the site, so it's perfect for rock climbing, camping, bonfires, picnics, mention it. By the way, also those in love with photography, the site is 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 very perfect. So I urge everyone out there to come and you know witness what is happening at Sezwa Falls. These falls are unique in a way. 
you will see this when you come to the site but what i can tell you is you shouldn't endeavor to miss out on visiting this site actually sezibar falls because of you know its uniqueness and greatness it's one of the activities that anyone who would wish to go to jinja you know for for a tour of course you pass by sezibar falls and you you know uh, you, you you've got to enjoy what the site has to offer Yeah, we have a lot of green around. We have now this beautiful bamboo forest that I've just come across. The bamboo is so grown and there's so much more growing. You know, I'm just looking around and I'm like, wow. And I've been to this place more than five, six times, but I had never seen this bamboo forest. So this just shows you as travelers that it's very important to explore different parts of the destinations you visit, you know. If it's a travel site, if it's a country, explore the different avenues in that country. There is always so much more to learn, so much to see. Like, I have not seen this and this is so beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. So I encourage you guys to come to Sezibar Falls. It's very close to Kampala. Less than, less than two hours actually from Kampala. You know, you just pass through the traffic of Mokono and you're here. And it's so beautiful and you can't even know you're very close to town. They offer camping spaces, you know, tours. Oh, it's so beautiful. Otherwise, enjoy this video. Let me know what you think about this content. Have you been to say the Falls? What do you think about it? But until next time, bye!